We're going to call the February 11th Roads Commission meeting to order. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Go oath of office. Mr. Kohler, you want to go first? Or? I suppose I don't have the sheet going. I do, just in <coughs> case you forgot. <laughs> What your duties are. I, Ron Kohler, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the State of Minnesota and faithfully discharge the duties as a member of the City of East Bethel Road Commission in the County of Anoka and the State of Minnesota to the best of my ability. So help me God. Right on, hand that over to Mr. Wright, will you? Oh, I guess oh, wait, he's got one. He's got yeah, one. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining the uh, Rose Commission. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. I do solemnly swear to affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the state of Minnesota and faithfully discharge duties as a member of the City of East Bethel Road Commission in the county of Anoka, the state of Minnesota, to the best of my ability. So help me God. Thanks, sir. Tom and Ron, thank you much. I don't have a certificate. We'll get them to you at the next meeting. And hopefully, we'll have them done. So you can frame them, hang them on your wall. <laughs> yeah. Take this quick minute to thank Mr. Smith and Mr. Wright, who are on the Planning Commission, for still serving on here. Without that, we'd be, we wouldn't have a meeting tonight. We wouldn't have the quorum. All right. Uh, election of chair and co chair. I'll make a motion to keep the same chair and co-chair we had previously. Okay. I'll second that. Chair? <laughs> Who's the co-chair? Tom is co-chair. You are. No, I don't want to be. <laughs> Tom, well, Tom is co-chair. Tom is co-chair. Oh, okay. okay. All, right. All right. Is that okay? Perfect. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it was grueling this last time. So. All right. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on, <coughs> approved minutes. I didn't have any problems with them. I'll make a motion to adopt the minutes. I'll second it. Any comments, questions, or corrections? Must be good, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, or none? Financial rules or financial Road financial information for us. Okay. We don't have the uh, operations budget. There isn't much to report on that yet. Um, they were still finishing up the 2019 stuff, so they didn't have an updated one for us yet. But pretty much uh, nothing really to report there. The uh, one I've included in your packet is the capital fund budgets, both the street aid, state aid budget, and the streets capital budget. We'll kind of go over both of those again later, though, when we get into the capital improvement planning. Well, speaking of financial, uh, yeah, I want to thank the guys in the last storm that got out, plowing, got the roads cleaned up good, got them sanded, salt, or whatever we're using. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really mm -hmm. care what it costs. Yeah, we were out Sunday that for that one. Clean. That one went pretty nice. Two inches of fluff is pretty easy to plow off for our equipment, so we like those. <laughs> yeah, but if they don't plow, it gets run over, and then it makes yeah, that bad great. base underneath. The more we can take off mechanically, the easier it is. And we have to use less chemical and less mm -hmm. money in the springtime when it's packed down into ice. So. Well, tell the guys the thanks. We'll do. People do thank the job for it. I said, well, I ain't driving the truck, so <laughs> thank me anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, wow, we're moving too quick here. Oh, yeah, you're too fast. <laughs> Class 5. Item 5.0, consider recommendation for class five projects for the year 2020. In 2019, the city of East Bethel resurfaced the following gravel roads of class five. It was Klondike Drive and Palisade Drive for a total of around 10,500 feet. The recommended roads for 2020 class five resurfacing, <coughs> resurfacing include Naple Street and 197th at 4,525 feet, Taylor Street at 1,460 feet, Packard Street at 1,290 feet, Nassau Court at 880 feet, 
and 198th Avenue at 1,957 feet. $35,000 has been budgeted in 2020 for gravel road maintenance. The cost for these projects are for material and delivery. Our city staff conducts the grading, compaction, and finishing of the material. Prior to the placement of any new class five, the st our staff will reclaim the shoulders and reshape the existing road surface. Staff is also recommending an application of chloride to Klondike Drive. Based on previous year's pricing, the estimated project costs of the chloride and class five should be provided for in the, in the $35,000 budget. And I've included a project location map. I think did they give, yeah, yours is, is yours all in color on there? It's kind of hard to see on there, but it gives you an idea where these are. They're kind of spread out this year. <clears throat> oh, I have. I got here. I can't see them. It's kind of uh, the last little stragglers that are left over. They're, they're, except for Naples and 197th, they're just kind of single roads that uh, we've extended out for quite a while, but they're in need of a, a new surfacing on them. They'll probably get 8 to 10 years out of them after this one. Naples and 197th is a, more of a residential neighborhood. They've been in before looking for, a, they were one of the neighborhoods that looked at doing the asphalt quite a few years ago. It was but. I've got questions again on Klondike. How long it would take to get that asphalt in? Yeah, I've, I've got that listed in our cap on the next item too. We can kind of go over it on there, but. We're looking at probably close to $2 million to pave that. What portion of the 35000 is for Klondike? And on, on this year, uh, that's what we did last year, so of the, for the chloride, you mean? Yeah, for the chloride and the, and the gravel. There won't be any gravel on Klondike this year. That's we did the whole road last year, so it's all, it's only one year old. It takes about f between five and $6,000 to cover it with chloride. Do you remember offhand what it cost last year to do the gravel? Um, we pretty much used $30,000. We used the, thir the full $35,000 on it last year. Just on Klondike? And Palisade. It's a mile and three quarters. With Palisade, it's, it's two miles long. The $35,000 budget has been the same for about 10 years. We haven't raised it in 10 years, but the prices we've gotten on class five have surprisingly stayed fairly uh, fairly steady. So I think we'll be okay again this year. Until we start seeing a, a spike in it, um, I think we can probably keep that at where it's at. Where do we get the class five from? Uh, the last couple of years has been from Bjorkland. Has been Otamora. the low, Otamora's pit, yep. We've had one yeah. year we had it from uh, Playstead. Yeah, their prices up there, are, you can't beat them for rock and yeah. mason sand, everything, yeah. And we get a we get a high clay binder. It's uh, it's a little slippery when it's wet when we first put it down, but it holds the moisture and better and tightens up better as the drier season comes later in the summer. And after we've done a few of these roads now, we're probably on our third rotation on most of these. They're getting a pretty good base and we're able to extend them out longer, so On average, how often are we doing Klondike uh, with the class five? It's been probably, I'd have to go back and look. Roughly every five years, 10 years? Uh, at the most, eight years. I think the one year we used some stuff that didn't have as much clay in it and it didn't last as long. It got really dusty. Turned in, if, if, Once you lose that clay binder, it turns into washboard right away. Yeah. All that dust you see flying around, that's the clay particles that are disappearing. So. I think it was about five or six years from the previous one before that. The rest of these have all been eight years or so on rotations. We've got 30, 30 gravel roads now that we've paved a couple of them with these other projects. We should take over Ryan's lanes and the little strip in Columbus. Yeah. Well, you know, because our falls go through there anyway. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, heading over the no. beach. Oddball stretch of gravel. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those pieces of East Bethel that you got to go through another town to get, <laughs> to get to it. 
But, you know, I mean, I, I just don't know what it would take. And there's a lot of people live on that road. A lot of money people. You know, and that Columbus wouldn't have to drive all the way over here just for that little strip. So here's, what here's what you talked about. You remember that time for Tim? We had talked about trying to do a swap or something with Columbus to get Bryant Lane or 190th Lane. That little strip coming off Lexington into Cool Lake Beach. I've been before your time. I know. I have all those good memories. <laughs> this isn't in your packet, but this is a map showing there all of our gravel roads in red. Oh. Here's Klondike for Palisade. Are those maps on the website? This one is not. This is one I made. Got about 16 miles of gravel road still. And you can see they're just kind of evenly spread out. There's a, a few spots like over here where there's a pretty good cluster, but I mean, in all corners, there's one pretty much in every corner. got 135 miles of road so a little over 10 percent of it's still gravel so that's what we're recommending for this year based on our rotation and kind of what we've seen and doing the maintenance that they require the most so Yeah, we're looking for a recommendation for city council so we can get it out to bid or get quotes on it at least. I'll make a recommendation to forward the class five projects for 2020 to city council. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hear none. <coughs> Move it on over. All right, number eight, 2021 to 25 capital road improvements. The requested action is to begin planning process for the municipal street aid and street capital improvement plans. Each year the road commission prepares a uh, capital improvement plan which updates projects, evaluates priorities and establishes the funding for these works for the coming year and for each of the subsequent years for a five year period. The plan is presented to the City Council for their per approval and used for preparing the coming year's budget. Attached is the 2020 to 2024 road CIP. We will discuss those projects that are listed for 2021 and determine if they need to stay in their current funding year or be rearranged to reflect any changes in our road priorities. Other projects can be added and existing ones can be deleted if there's a need for restructuring the schedule. The City of East Bethel has received a municipal state aid allotment of $645,918 for 2020, which is $47,716 above the estimated allotment based on our 2019 amount. Staff is seeking input from the Road Commission on which projects to prioritize and add to the MSA capital improvement plan and the roads capital improvement plan for the next five years. Possible items for addition to the MSCIP include, and a lot of these are already included on our plan, Davenport Street, from 209th up to and including 213th Avenue, 181st Avenue from Highway 65 to Jackson Street, University Avenue from Sims Road to 221st Avenue, Klondike Drive and Sunset Road. So I've included what we developed last year and was approved by the, uh, oops, lost my. <clears throat> I think 181st is talked about quite a bit. <laughs> so yep, so we have that one planned for next year, so. 181st between 65 and. <clears throat> and that's a joint project with Ham Lake. 
that one we've both cities have kind of had that in place for a while now so I, I think we should probably try and keep that locked in so it doesn't screw up both cities plans we're going to come down to who, which city is going to be the lead agency on it and do all the engineering work we'll have to work that out with them and figure out a compensation for it so did craig already do a workup on how what it would cost to do it or did no he? not yet no not until we get to the uh city council approval for it these numbers that we have on here are just kind of rough estimates that him and i put together based on our past projects so we generally try and bump it up a little bit higher but sometimes when you get into bad soils and stuff that can change that which we know we're going to have on there for part of it anyways so for this year we've got durant street that's been approved by the city council to start the engineering so they approved that in december so craig is working on that so for next year uh, it would be 181st avenue with ham lake in 2022, we had Davenport Street, which is the road from the post office going towards the ice arena. It's an older section that we've toured on quite a few times on the tour. That would complete that whole stretch then and brought up the MSA standard with concrete curb and gutter and full shoulders on it. Is Durant Street <clears throat> going to be able to be done with an overlay? I mean, aren't there some pretty bad spots going over there? It's, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a reconstruction for the most part. Part of it's going to be, none, none of it's going to be, I don't think any of it's going to be straight overlay. It's going to be all re reclaimed and some soils correction involved and then a new asphalt surface on top. Yeah, because I mean, there's spots on Durant that, <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you do, it's kind of like doing Lincoln on Coon Lake Beach where they had to go down so deep in some spots just because of the water. Yep. Pew. We should know more once we get the engineer's estimate. He, he's going to do the soil borings and all that. We'll have a better idea in the next probably month or two on that one, which we can kind of help budget what we'll have when we start the year too. We are going to have, as I was said in the right up there, we'll have an extra 50, about $50,000 from our MSA allotment, which will help too. And then we can kind of plan on carrying that forward usually it doesn't usually go down it did a couple years ago but well, for the most part it stays steady or goes up a little bit for 2023 we have university avenue of which is a joint project with oak grove we've talked with their city and they've kind of penciled that one in on their schedule for that year too that same thing with that one there's poor soils through part of it seems to be a theme and East Bethel. <laughs> sure. And we don't have anything in place for 2024. So that's where we're looking for recommendations and we can start developing a draft plan from that and 2025 for that matter. Any of the MSA stuff we do, we're going to wind up with a ton of no parking signs on our roads. I had somebody call me and what what they say it was 48 no parking signs on what's your what's that road? Sandy Drive. Sandy Drive. Yep. It's a require requirement from the state of Minnesota. Part of the doing business with them. <laughs> but it just seems so. I mean, it's just one right after another. It they have to they have to have a minimum space between them. Is that state statute or yep. is that just it's requirement of using msa money we required to meet a standard set by the state hmm. they did it on jackson street too oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, done it on Taylor. wild rice and yeah. every every road we've done we've had to do that every city has to do that is there a bag done um by the senior housing right uh, not anymore. Oh, we, not anymore. They, they, oh. had a, they had a uh, temporary no parking parking allowed there while they were working on that one. So what's going to happen then with booster days when people park down on that road? Are they going to get tagged or the cops going to be told, hey, you know, back off? It's, the city is the authority on enforcement, so we can decide enforcement on it. 
which when we have, we get requests all the time from people that live on those roads, if they have like a graduation party, right. we'll, we'll permit parking on one side of the road for them, as long as emergency vehicles can still get through. And we'll let the deputies know too, oh. and they, they, won't, they won't write a ticket. Okay. Weddings, a lot of graduation requests, garage sales, things like that, they usually give us a call. Our deputies are pretty good at not being bullies about it. They'll give them a warning or anything if there's something that happens. But. Yeah, a lot of them got common sense. <laughs> yeah. They're standing there going, walk around the side of the road. Right. <laughs> Especially at night, get the headlights on them, all you see is signs. Right. Yeah. The landing strip. Yeah. 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 You can't see the deer with all the reflections <laughs> from the <laughs> signs. Every morning yeah. after work, it's just. <laughs> and the new signs are so reflective that yeah. they're yeah. almost like headlights coming back at you. Speaking of that, um, God, this was way back when I was still in city council. <clears throat> it was supposedly that, well, at that time, if I would have got back in, Jack and I or someone was supposed to have to go with Jack and drive around and beam these signs with some kind of a light. Oh, I remember to see that. See what the reflectivity was. Huh. And that was back yeah. in 2012, 13. Something yep, like that. that was an unfunded state mandate that. All signs had to meet a retro reflectivity requirement, and the way they tested it was by a driver over the age of 50 at night <laughs> deciding based on their eyesight whether or not it was reflective enough. <laughs> so we actually had our, we had two of our employees work night shifts for a while, and they drove around and, and did every sign in the city, and we have it in a spreadsheet. <laughs> and as we get to them, we replace them. So. They had, to, they had to, before they left, they had to use two signs, one that was good and one that was bad, and calibrate with those, and then they would go out and mark them, so. Or you can, there's a special, really expensive gun you can use, and you go up to the sign, hold it on there, and it takes yeah. a reading. Mm -hmm. Or you can just do a blanket replacement where you just replace all your signs at a certain amount of interval of years, but it's too much money for us, so we just have to replace the worst ones. There's a new sign now coming into the city. Put up on Clear Lake Beach. It's underneath the other one. Mm -hmm. What is that? That was from the Jake Brake Ordinance. Oh, yeah. That's so it's, what it says, it says uh, no engine braking. Mm -hmm. They're on all the city signs. Mm -hmm. I think they're taking the one out of the Coon Lake Beach. That one might be gone. And that we were only going to put them up because the odds of a, a heavy truck going into Coon Lake Beach are pretty. <laughs> Pretty rare. You got the maybe the delivery to the restaurant there. That's about it. We needed one on another county road, so. Yeah, th didn't that come from Gopher Drive? Yep. Yep. I Dave. Dave and. Yep. Karen. Yep. We just put those up about a week and a half ago. Hmm. Whatever happened to that lady that was having people? park on the side of the road and then go down onto that lake? Um, Anoka County, that was given to Anoka County. Jack and I <coughs> tried following up with them a couple times and they never replied to us. It's the county has to post it. The city the city council and the road commission approved it has no parking on there. Mm -hmm. And they haven't put the signs up yet. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down the edge yeah. of Menard mm -hmm. Lake there Menard, off of 24. Yeah. And 237. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just testing my memory here. <laughs> they were supposed to do maybe a speed test in there too. That's and good. also on Gopher Drive was requested a speed study, I mean. Yeah, did they do that? Have you guys heard anything at all? We haven't heard anything. A speed study from Anoka County on Gopher Drive or 237. So. I mean, if you live on a county road. It's like you're taking over Jersey. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, anybody got any more questions? Anybody have any suggestions to throw up on here that roads they've heard about or seen? Hmm. Other than Klondike? I know that's, we could start trying to maybe figure out something for that, I guess, or do part of it, or I don't know how to tackle that one. <laughs> Whoever decides how to fix that could be a, might have a statue <laughs> erected of them. <laughs> yeah, because the Davenport Street one, that's been kind of, that's been talked about since, well, keeps just getting back kicked still further and city further, council further and further, further out. Yeah. 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 Kind of a jaggy thing. Anybody got any ideas? I haven't really heard of any of the other roads that are having trouble. 
This plan will address all of our real major MSA roads that need it, with the exception of Klondike. We might be starting to get into the point where we have to look at just doing some mill and overlays on some existing roads. Um, I've noticed like Briarwood is getting to the point where it's getting alligator cracks all over it. It'll last for a while, but five years it might be to that point where it's going to need an overlay. Same with uh, Gravel, Klondike, and Polk and Jackson are getting kind of beat up because there's a couple areas in there too. So I know on that road of, that I'm on, Davenport, on south of 237th, there's one spot in there that's getting sod up. Yeah. South of me. Starting to break up a little bit. We could throw that in, so that'll take us to our other one too on the street capital fund. This is mainly for... Uh, neighborhood roads, we can use this money for really anything. The MSA money has to be used on MSA roads. This money here can be used on any city street. It's from our general fund transfer. Weren't there some trucks hauling some pretty heavy stuff on Briarwood not too long ago? I heard it through the grapevine. Somebody had asked me why they were hauling so much <coughs> dirt with heavy trucks on Briarwood. They can haul heavy during the winter time. There's a, a overweight winter road increases. They mined out um, Johnson's, Paul's dad, I can't think of his name. Oh, Paul, their dad? No, Paul's dad, they mined. Right. He had him dig out a well at Pond. Yeah, was a few yeah, years ago, that was a few years ago. Probably three Four or years five ago? years ago. Four? Yeah. yeah. Behind the golf course there? Yeah. Yeah, no, this was fairly, it was like recent. So for this year, we have um, no big overlay projects planned, just our Jeep, our uh, stuff we talked about at our last meeting. For 2021, we've got 183rd overlay and Sunset Drive overlay. Both of those are probably going to require um, total reclaiming of the road. Wasn't Sunset Drive done that not, not too long ago? Yeah. No, Sunset's been quite a while. They did a uh, seal coat on it, chip seal, uh, with the border of Linwood. Yeah. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yeah. Oh, that's, okay, now I know what we're talking about. It goes from yeah, where they did the 26 to whatever bon, the road is. Bond Lake Drive. Bond Lake Drive, yeah. Well, I, I was thinking that was done roughly from That one's a border street with um, Linwood, so mm -hmm. we're thinking maybe they'll contribute some to that one. We haven't discussed it a lot with them yet, but. So they used what, Maple, Maple Street on the west side? Is that the Paul Street problem where they had to close it all? On which one? Maple, that 22 one. You have the standing water in between the two little ponds there, where the initial little one spot was one. By Arby's? Yeah, by Arby's. Yeah, that was all. That's all done? Yep, that was repaved last year. Okay. We had a couple of small overlays. That was one of them that we did last year. Yeah, that's the nicest, nicest section in the whole neighborhood now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm looking, there was a... Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Taxis. <laughs> uh, there was one cor correction on the uh, minutes on page four or five. And I don't know if they're still doing it. said, Chairman Roche asked ladies on Ronning if you remember it's from the sewer and water days when Red River Energy was trying to run the lines. It's actually Great River Energy. Oh, I can, you know, I can make that change. Where's that one on there? What paragraph? Page four or five. It's on oh, I got one, it. yep. two, three, fourth paragraph. Fourth paragraph. Yeah, I can make that change on this. Yeah, so you brought up sunset and it started dinging my head here. Funny what triggers that stuff. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess we'll just have to come back next time with some ideas. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I can start putting together a, a draft one, so I'll, I'll drop off the 2020 on here. We'll have a pretty good estimate of what the starting balance is going to be. And I'll leave 2025 blank, and we can fill in those projects. Um, going down through a couple years, on 2022, <clears throat> we have uh, three neighborhoods that will be overlaid. 
Um, Shenandoah Ridge is off of East Bethel Boulevard. Let me show you on a map real quick too. Mm -hmm. is, is that on the other side of the way? Yeah, it's on the north side. So here's, it's kind of hard to tell, here's City Hall, here's Baton, this is our city portion of East Bethel Boulevard, this neighborhood here is, uh, is one of them, it's just a T neighborhood, but it's never, no, they've never had any chip seal done, they haven't had any, just the original pavement in there still, so that's ready for uh, some work. The other one is right off of Baton here, this neighborhood is Shawnee Woods. That would get an overlay. So those would be in 20, 2022. Is that really, other than, you know, I mean, most of their traffic comes off the time, but that neighborhood is kind of small. It's like a horseshoe. Yeah. There's some pavement in there that's in really bad shape. Some that needs to be uh, corrected. Not so just if it's bad enough, can we just fill in a hole? Or? Well, that's what we've been doing. We just we've been patching it every year. It just blows apart again. So it's time to do an overlay and correct the drainage to get the water off the road better in there. Another item we'll have to look at at some point. We've got a, quite a few neighborhoods that are approaching their reconstruction age, which means going in and tearing out the whole road and starting o starting over. Most cities, when they get to that point, there's different ways they attack it. Some cities, they pay for it all from the general fund. Most cities do an assessment to the houses on those neighborhoods. How that's broken down is different from city to city, but it's, a, it's an issue that the Road Commission and the City Council are going to have to address at some point when we get to those. Are, are they going to do assessments? Is it going to be funded from everybody in the city? <clears throat> a lot of the neighborhoods around Coon Lake are, have reached that point. Are we going to put in concrete curb and gutter at that time? Not around Coon Lake Beach. We just did those. No, more like on the north side of Coon Lake. Oh, a lot of those neighborhoods oh, yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pavement's 40 some years old. Yeah. yeah They've yeah, got yeah. Uh, steel culverts that we've been replacing as they fail, but a lot of them are getting pretty bad. Whatever happened with that guy up on Deerwood? I was having the flooding issue, but we were, we had brought it and talked about the road mm -hmm. that went by it. Mm, yeah. And whatever came of that. The city council had the same response as the road commission that it was his responsibility for anything in his yard that he wanted done. And we haven't had any issues there of any flooding problems. But he went in and cut down his own trees the last time I saw those down there. I think there was. Something about we, we was going to run off and they were supposed to go back into a wetlands? Yep. Wasn't there a septic system involved? Yep. Yeah. You yeah, put a new green. one in? Yep. Yeah. Anybody think of anything other than we talked about that? Got a brain fart on it? Right through here. When was. Um, Talking about the north side of Coon Lake. Oh, where's that road? Not. It's on the other side from Voss. He, he lives on like Lake. Yeah, he lives right there. His is Front Street or whatever it is. But on the other side of his place, what the heck's the name of them streets? You turn off, where you take a right at Tom Thumb. Oh, the old Tom Thumb. Trial Circle? Yeah, there you go. Yep. I mean, those roads have been there for a long time. That one's getting a chip seal this year. That nothing. They've never had anything on. Well, they they have had an overlay on there. Uh, it was a real thin overlay. They did a whole bunch of them back in the early 2000s on a lot of these neighborhoods. Uh, the problem with an overlay, if you keep doing overlays, they have an asphalt curb on them. As you bring that asphalt up, you lose the reveal on the curb, so the curb height gets lower as you bring the asphalt up. And they're to the point now where you'd have to basically start over because there's no won't be any curb left on the road. There's, if you, you get six inches of blacktop underneath there. 
and how about feeling the channel drive? Because that's that stuff you get to through the boat launch and you go down there, and I've never seen anything done down there. That's one that would, that's one of the neighborhoods we're taught, you know, it's going to require probably a reconstruction at some point. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right yeah. Coon Lake on yeah. that point? This point here, we can, when we do our tour, we can drive through some of these neighborhoods too. It's going to be a big issue at some point in the coming years on how we're going to tackle those type of projects. Another one, like 187. It's on, it's, it's, oh well, it's, it's over by the mud on. Or is that 185th? 185th lane in that? Back in here. Yeah, because there's other. This is 183rd, this goes out to Lakeview Point. Uh -huh. that, that's one of the roads we have listed on here for 20, where was it? <clears throat> on 2021. Yep, 2021. Redoing that out to Lakeview Point. This whole neighborhood was chip sealed last year. Okay. It's in fairly decent shape. There's a section back here that's kind of beat up, but we patched it up really good and did a chip seal on it, so we should get a little bit more life out of that road. Doesn't that <coughs> road go a little, uh, wasn't it that one Mills from Mills State Farm owned that big piece of property? Mm -hmm. This piece. And they were going to build there and that's where that road stops, I believe. Yeah, I haven't heard anything on that project. That, as far as I know, it's nothing, they haven't done anything with it yet. I know there were some plans turned into the building department, but. So it's a lot of these older neighborhoods, like all these along here, uh, down here. Stuff that was put in in the six, pre-60s and before, basically. Right. Anybody else's neighborhood looking a little rough or hear anything? Or? 420, 23, we have Anderson Lakes, which is an older neighborhood, which is this one right here, these two streets. Or just an overlay in there. That's a rural section with no curb and gutter, so you can, those are pretty simple to do. Huh. Put a new layer of asphalt down, fix any major bad spots, and then we gravel the shoulders to match the slope and we're good to go. Hard part is matching driveways on a lot of those, so we don't have water flowing backwards. <clears throat> and I know there was talk at one time about swapping wild rice with 220 Park. And I think you were there, weren't you? With an Oak County uh, You were on the council then. When we had kind of thrown it up in the air, and Jack said he was talking with the county about trying to swap out 221st with wild rice drive. Yeah. There's been some discussions about it. I haven't heard anything since then, though. They're always talking about trying to realign these two at some point, too. Dollar store going in here. What are you talking about? Dollar There's a general. Dollar General going in across from EJ's and the gas station. <laughs> really? How yeah. did they determine to put it there? I don't know. <laughs> Are they expecting a lot of cross? I mean, I don't think they use much water there, so I don't think the, their septic's a big deal. Just for an employee bathroom, probably, is all they're going to have. What are your roads like, Jim? What? What are your roads like? Oh, right. From that 200 first? Right. You got good cracks, but the uh, pavement's good. Did you do last year did it do it more good or do it more? We did the crack sealing in there. Did you do Yeah, a couple years ago. The older part of Hidden Haven is another one that at some point we'll have to get probably reconstructed. was I think mid mid 80s but the there's a couple uh, spots in there that do not drain very well <clears throat> well 
Anybody else got any more uh, questions, comments, or input? Or? In between now and our next meeting, if you guys think of anything, just shoot me an email or something too. I can throw it on the list and if you hear from anybody else in the community that's got any roads that are in bad shape. Okay. I can, when we do our tour, I can try and get us over to some of these here too. It'd be good ones to drive through and kind of see what we're dealing with in the future. All right, number nine, council report and other business. We discussed 245th again last night. Um, it was an action item. Discussion about uh, the part of it was the uh, connector, who, pay, who would pay for the, the road would relocate to the south to be <coughs> with the south edge on the, on the county line um, if it goes. Yeah, Jack had made a request to connect us about cost as far as them, their obligation as far as relocating and he hadn't had an answer back yet. I think he was going to put it on a list to call him again, contact him again. Um, the uh, magic number for us is 44,000 construction cost. If it goes more than that, that's a deal breaker. There was some discussion, there's a $3,000 to $3,500 engineering fee. And the engineering fee is from the past discussion budget talks, 44,000 is construction, the engineering fee is like administrative, I think you'd probably call it. Um, as far as maintenance, Athens Township would maintain the road as far as the road surface, I believe, wasn't it? And uh, as far as plowing and such, East Bethel would go from 6th Avenue east to the cul-de-sac. And the development. Pardon? And the development. Yeah. Yes, and the development. Well, that's got going in on 245th and then around and then back down to the south end, right? There's going to be one continuous loop. To right. on the development part? Yeah. Well, there would be two ways to get in there, one on the south side and then one on 245th, or am I thinking of something different? He, he wanted to try, the developer wanted to try to have an entrance, a, ingress, egress at 243rd and 245th, and 243rd will not cooperate. That's that Bethel. Do anything yeah, else. Bethel. They wouldn't do nothing. Um, Truth or not, it's hard to say, but it's it's my opinion. It's the uh, council at Bethel probably convinced the guy to no go, no matter what. You hold your ground. Um, there's that one house. There's two tree lines. I think would get disturbed. Well, there, there might be more than that, but the one has. Buku tree. Mm -hmm. The other one would lose most of their. And uh, we tabled it for further information, um, quantify engineering cost, construction cost, and uh, more information about Connexus. If Connexus wants to dump the cost on us, then it, that's a deal breaker. Pretty much? I don't know if it's a road issue or not. Well, it's got to be. But people heard it through the grapevine or whatever is that there's going to be an ordinance passed that you can't leave your truck and trailer on the roads anymore in your neighborhood. Is yeah. that? That was on the agenda last night. That was remanded. That's uh, the real issue with that is ag agriculture. They're not all um, 
like rural residential and such, they're right. not all uh, ag, as I understand it, it was way before my time, but as I understand it, they had an opportunity to be cla classified as ag property. Right. And some of them aren't. And many, if not most of the farmers have trucks to haul their product to and from the, the market, grain elevators and such. And some of them would be caught in the middle of, can't have a truck there. Um, was it, a, I mean, in a way, I guess the reason I'm bringing up a roads is, is it, was it a thing that it was wrecking the roads or was it that's too much noise when somebody starts it or what's, what's you know, bringing it more, on? It's more with uh, people that have kept semi-tractor trailers on residential lots. Yeah. This is East Bethel, man. <laughs> we yeah. do that up here. I was curious, you yeah. know, because I, I couldn't come up with a reason other than maybe it's doing something too much weight on set on the road or no. Mm. It's pretty much all about uh, resident complaints. Yeah, basically. Huh. Okay, that's about it. Good quiet meeting then. I know. All right, anybody else uh, comments, questions? All right, I don't know. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to Make adjourn. I'll second. second. Oh, any comments or questions? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none? Weird, huh?